In 1347 at an Italian convent, Sister Ginevra notices Sister Fernanda has missed morning prayer and later sees her arrive with a donkey. Fernanda claims the donkey escaped and she had to go after it, which Ginevra finds weird because the donkey couldn't have opened the gates. Ginevra also thinks it's strange that Fernanda is wearing her black habit in spring. When handyman Lurko passes by and tells them good morning, the sisters yell at him and call him a creep for making eye contact with them since they must stay pure. Later Mother Maria also asks Fernanda why she was missing and gets suspicious of the donkey story because it only goes missing under Fernanda's care, which happens very often. Afterward Maria organizes the shelves with Ginevra, who brings her all the gossip about other nuns' misbehavior like eating two portions, although she gets distracted when she sees a naughty drawing on a book. Meanwhile Sister Alessandra is living a miserable life. She doesn't want to be there, but her father forced her to support the church. She spends her time praying and embroidering while hoping one day she'll see her suitor again. There's little contact with the outside world, and when her father visits, she barely gets to see him through a metal shade. In the afternoon when the three sisters are going down the road, Lurko sees them walk by and Fernanda starts yelling at him again for looking, followed by Ginevra throwing turnips at him. At first Alessandra is shocked, but then she starts yelling insults too and breaking Lurko's things as a way to deal with her inner frustrations. Poor Lurko can only stay down on the ground as the three girls take it out on him, spitting on him and calling him a Jew. Sometime later, Father Tommaso is leaving the convent to sell the embroidery in town and Lurko approaches him to explain he's tired of being mistreated, so he quits. In a castle not far from there, Lord Bruno discovers that his wife is sleeping with the servant Massetto. As soon as Bruno enters the room, Massetto escapes through the window and runs back to the servant's quarters, where he pretends to be asleep. Bruno decides to cut a piece of Massetto's hair to identify him in the morning, not wanting to make a scene in front of the others. After Bruno leaves, Massetto uses the same knife to cut a piece of hair from every single servant in the room. The next morning, nobody understands what happened and Bruno can't do anything except tell everyone to get a proper haircut. Sometime later, Bruno's wife approaches Massetto, wanting to continue their affair. Massetto tries to ignore her, but she forces him to kiss her. This is seen by Bruno, who sends the guards to kill Massetto. Terrified, the servant immediately runs away and manages to lose the guards by entering the forest. Near the river he finds Tommaso, who instead of selling the embroidery, he's gotten drunk and accidentally dropped all the fabrics in the water. Massetto helps him retrieve a few things and put the cart back together, so Tommaso thanks him by offering a place to stay the night. In the evening, they stay in Tommaso's shack and share some food and drinks. Massetto also uses the chance to confess his sins, and Tommaso is shocked to hear about some naughty acts he didn't know even existed. When Massetto says he wants to start over as a good man and that he's being chased, Tommaso gets an idea. The next day Tommaso brings Massetto to the convent and introduces him as the new handyman, but Massetto is pretending to be deaf-mute. When Maria asks about the fabrics, Tommaso lies and says he was robbed. Massetto soon starts working and Ginevra and Fernanda immediately notice his presence, becoming very curious about him. Sometime later, Alessandra is trying to teach a new novice about the convent's routine, but Fernanda keeps blocking their way by pretending to sweep. While Alessandra demands an explanation, Massetto arrives to work on the wall and smiles at them. Fernanda immediately freaks out and grabs an axe to threaten him, thinking he's an intruder. Luckily Alessandra brings Maria, who explains things before it escalates. Afterward, Fernanda has fun screaming into Massetto's supposedly deaf ears while Maria tells Alessandra that the embroidery was stolen, so work will be doubled to make up for it. Alessandra now works with a quiet old sister, which only makes the whole situation more depressing. In her frustration, Alessandra accidentally breaks her embroidery frame, so she takes it to Massetto to fix it. Fernanda and Ginevra watch her from afar, thinking it's suspicious Alessandra is meeting with a guy in private. While Massetto fixes the frame, Alessandra uses the opportunity to rant and cry about her situation, which Massetto finds annoying but he has to pretend he can't hear her. Later in the afternoon, it's time for confession. Ginevra is nervous and tells Father Tommaso that she ate a turnip from the garden without sharing before finally confessing she's been having impure thoughts. When it's Fernanda's turn, she tries to copy Ginevra's confession, so Tommaso has to scold her for spying on them and for missing the prayers with the same donkey excuse. However Fernanda insists she has no other sins. That night, Fernanda helps her friend Marta sneak into the convent. They steal the mass wine and take it to Alessandra's room, where they convince her to get drunk together. They have so much fun that they get too loud and Ginevra comes over to complain, but they just drag her in and make her drink with them. Eventually Marta makes Alessandra and Ginevra admit they've never been with a man, so she shares some stories of how wonderful it is, including the detail of using the plant belladonna to be more attractive. After Alessandra falls asleep, Fernanda and Marta start kissing and try to bring Ginevra into it. Ginevra protests so Fernanda takes her to her room, only to end up spending the night together. The next day, Alessandra brings Massetto a handkerchief she embroidered and uses it to wipe his sweat. She also helps him with the gardening, which makes her feel hot so she takes off her veil. The moment gets tense then suddenly they start kissing, which prompts Massetto to push Alessandra on the ground to do the dirty. At that moment the bell starts ringing and Alessandra gets scared, so she pushes Massetto and runs away. 
Later during the prayers, Fernanda notices Alessandra has dirt under her nails. Afterward, Ginevra and Fernanda are doing the washing and Ginevra tries to discuss what they did last night, but Fernanda shuts her up. Then Alessandra comes by to wash her veil, which the others find suspicious because she never washes anything. After explaining she got it dirty with Macedo, she hears how much work washing is and decides to leave the veil for Ginevra to do it instead. Once Alessandra is gone, a jealous Fernanda leaves too saying she'll clean the cellar. Ginevra finishes the washing alone, but when she checks the cellar, Fernanda isn't there. Meanwhile Fernanda meets with Marta, who makes a potion with Belladonna and applies it to Fernanda's eyes to make them dilate. They also use a bit of blood to add some color to her cheeks. Behind the plants, Ginevra watches most of the process. Then Marta and Fernanda find Macedo and use a knife to make him do the dirty with both of them at the same time. While they have fun, Ginevra finds the pot of Belladonna and comes looking for them, but they're already done and playing innocent. Ginevra wonders if their night together meant anything to Fernanda, who says it was just for fun and asks Ginevra to forget about it. Later in the evening, Macedo tells Tommaso that he's truly enjoying his time here and plans on staying for a long time. They're suddenly interrupted by Maria, so Macedo quickly hides while Tommaso takes her away on a walk. The next day while Maria and Tommaso receive the bishop for an inspection, Macedo crawls through a window to sneak into Alessandra's room and do the dirty. While they're in the middle of it, the old helper sister comes in and doesn't even notice them, but Tommaso can't help cursing when he sees her. Alessandra is shocked to hear him speak, but before she can confront him about it, they hear people coming. Tommaso hides under the bed while Alessandra rushes to work, fixing her clothes the best she can. The bishop and Maria come by and see everything is in order, so once they're gone Tommaso escapes through the window. Afterward the bishop checks the accounting books, noticing something weird about the sales of the fabrics caused by Maria and Tommaso inventing numbers to hide the robbery. Suddenly they're interrupted by Ginevra, who wants to tell on Fernanda. Maria immediately drags her away to talk in private, but she doesn't take Ginevra's stories of donkeys and alcohol very seriously. After a hard day of work, Ginevra comes across a sleeping Macedo and Temptation finally wins her over. She hides in the cellar to make some Belladonna potion, but instead of putting it in her eyes she drinks it because she didn't see the ritual well. Then she uses too much blood on her cheeks and takes off her veil, which makes her look deranged. Meanwhile Alessandra confronts Macedo about his speaking, but they hear someone coming so Alessandra hides while Macedo pretends to be asleep. Suddenly Ginevra comes in and kisses Macedo, but she quickly pulls back because it feels very different. Thanks to the effects of the Belladonna, Ginevra confesses the truth, she actually likes women, and she is Jewish. Then she hears someone humming outside and hallucinates it must be angels, so she rushes to hide in the same spot as Alessandra. Then Fernanda comes in wearing black and with a knife a hand, she ties Macedo's hands and blindfolds him before taking him away. Getting suspicious, Alessandra and Ginevra start to follow them, noticing Fernanda is taking the donkey to use the usual excuse later. They cross the forest for a few hours and by the time night falls, they finally discover the truth behind Fernanda's escapades, it turns out she's a witch, so she comes to the forest to meet with Marta and other witches. Now they're dancing around the fire with almost no clothes on and Macedo is being prepared for a fertility ritual. Delighted by what she sees, Ginevra takes her clothes off and runs to join the dancing while Fernanda sits on Macedo, ready to sacrifice him. Macedo decides to talk to ask for mercy and Fernanda thinks they cured him, but Marta just gags him and gets the knife ready. At that moment the dancing stops when the witches finally notice Ginevra, who starts panicking and causing a scene because she's still under the effects of the Belladonna. Marta tries to stop her but Ginevra attacks her, making them fall to the ground to fight. After some struggle, Ginevra manages to knock Marta out while Alessandra uses the chance to stop Fernanda and free Macedo. Then the sisters demand an explanation for his lies but get interrupted when Ginevra runs away with the donkey. Moments later, Ginevra is back at the convent, where she starts yelling and pounding on every door to wake everyone up. The bishop finds her first and she starts telling everything she saw while he tries to calm her down. At that moment the rest of the group arrives and starts telling on her too, causing a huge argument that doesn't stop until the bishop learns that Ginevra is Jewish. Confused and frustrated, the bishop goes to find Maria, who comes out of her room with a man's pants on her head. Suddenly Macedo starts talking and everyone is in shock, so Tommaso comes out of Maria's room to announce it's a miracle. The next morning, the bishop lists of all Ginevra's sins and decides the punishment will be fasting for a whole year. However he realizes that will kill her out of hunger, so instead it's decided she'll skip lunch every day for a year. Next he judges Alessandra and points out her father will be disappointed, which is Alessandra begging for mercy. When it's Fernanda's turn, she clearly doesn't care and keeps rolling her eyes at the bishop's scolding. Lastly he judges Maria, who keeps sharing looks with Tommaso while the bishop speaks. In the end, the bishop decides to take Tommaso's priesthood and send him away to a monastery. Tommaso tries to say a final heartful goodbye to Maria, but the bishop kicks him out. Soon a new priest comes to the convent, and a really old man is chosen to avoid trouble. This only makes it annoying because his hands shake during communion. The bishop also makes sure to finally baptize Ginevra. Later the sisters apologize to each other and wonder what will happen to Macedo. 
Meanwhile Macedo has been sent back to Bruno, who has divorced his cheating wife and married again. Bruno keeps Macedo in a cell, explaining that instead of executing him he'll keep him alive to cause him pain for as long as possible. After Bruno is gone, Macedo tries to convince the guards to free him, but they just laugh at him. Suddenly, a mysterious person leaves a turtle with a candle on its shell near the door. The guards are so fascinated by it that they start following it, and once they're out of sight, the sisters come in to free Macedo, leaving a doll in the cell in exchange. They also give him a knife in his own habit so he can dress up and hide with them in the convent. When the guards come back, they don't notice the prisoner as a doll. Then the group is running through the forest and notices the convent's donkey on the bridge. It turns out Maria is using Fernanda's donkey plan to meet Tommaso in secret, sharing kisses under the moonlight. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.